Tonight on Arts and Entertainment, a special full half-hour report on the Festival of Festivals underway this week in Toronto. It's the 14th annual film festival, and tonight we'll see how it's grown and improved over the years. We'll also have a report on Canadian films being showcased and a look at In Country, a film about life after Vietnam directed by Norman Jewison. This half-hour special is produced by CBC Toronto and is hosted by Beth Harrington. and tonight CBC Toronto is off to the Festival of Festivals. We've been following the goings-on since last Thursday night and so far the festival is living up to its reputation as being a people's festival. You know, international festivals serve many purposes. At Cannes, it's a competition. In LA, it's a strictly business, but in Toronto, it's all pleasure. Patricia Chu takes this look at the festival from its humble beginnings to its coming of age. And I would like to say that I'm very honored to have been asked here to Toronto. In 1977, and, uh, celebrities weren't here. exactly beating a and, path um, to Toronto's second festival of festivals. With less than $200,000, its organizers put together 100 films in just four theaters. There were plenty of empty seats. Did we send four hours to Linda B? And when's she getting in? Helga Stephenson joined the festival two years later. She's now the executive director. I began working with the festival in 1979, mm -hmm. which uh, we worked on the publicity. That was the famous year of the Impraise of Older Women fiasco, and the, when the censor attacked and banned the film, which made all the people want to run into opening night and the theater wasn't big enough. And it was at, that was at the Elgin. So I was on the front lines at the front door, sort of taking people for cons consolation cocktails at the Sil Silver Rail restaurant. <laughs> A decade later, there's a lot to laugh about. Now in its 14th season, the Festival of Festival ranks among the top five international film festivals. It's a $3 million banquet of 322 films. Philippe Marek is the vice president of the French Critics' Union. He says he's addicted to the Toronto Festival. In Toronto, uh, you have uh, uh, five very clever programmers who make very clever choices. Houston Post critic Joe Layden explains why he you chose to cover Toronto to over Cannes last year. It's like I tell people, you know, people will go to Telluride uh, to make contacts. They may go to Cannes to make deals, but they come to Toronto to see movies. Toronto is an embarrassment of riches. The farther away you live from the film festival, the better it looks. Now magazine critic John Harkness says the festival has grown too big. He calls it a victim of its own success. It becomes a media-generated sort of event where you're uh, very much it becomes the trendy thing to do is to go to the festival for 10 days. And you wind up with people who have very little, a lot of people, I think, who have very little interest in film, but a great deal of interest in being at the event. Canadian filmmakers say they need the hype and glamour of the festival because among the celebrities and would-be celebrities, there are also the deal makers and distributors. It's when you get people together and, uh, and where people are, are in from, from other places and also agree that then there is some excitement and fever that takes over. And this is how films get promoted when they don't have big stars. You know, Peter O'Brien has produced 10 films, including The Gray Fox, One Magic Christmas, and My American Cousin. My American Cousin was made at the Festival of Festivals. Take that slimy jacket off, Cheryl. Hey, wait a minute. Where I come from, you don't talk to chicks like that. Yeah? That's so? Why don't you go back to wherever it is you came from, you no good lazy bum? I had been told up to the Festival of Festivals by uh, most people involved with that film that it was undistributable. And what happened at the festival was that the people went mad for it. And it made a million dollars in Canada. Never mind the critics, the parties, and the behind-the-scenes deals. The festival's real success is its audience. More people go to the Festival of Festivals than any other film festival in the world. You get a chance to see a lot of diverse films that you wouldn't ordinarily get to see. It's great. I'm actually in a completely different field, but a friend of mine is in film, and I never realized how addictive it would be. It's great. And addictive it certainly is.